Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we'll be looking at something that's a little different compared to what we've reviewed in the past. And that gun is the SMK B2. It might be a little bit uh, less high tech than what we've looked at in the past, but if anything it's a bit of a legend in more ways than one. So then, let's move on to features and see what exactly £45 will get you when it's invested into an air rifle. Starting from the rear of the rifle, we do not get a recoil pad, but we do get a grooved rear end to the stock here, which is a little bit unique and uh, tends to reflect what some of the rifles was like 30 or 40 years ago, uh, which is quite interesting. You don't see that anymore. Moving on to the trigger, the trigger itself is a single stage unit and also, which may surprise many, is completely metal. Um, even the trigger guard itself is also completely metal, which I did not expect for a rifle at this price point. As I said, £45, can't complain about that. Moving further along the rifle, you've also got this groove which has been cut into either sides of the stock, which is reasonably comfortable to hold and also gives the rifle a little bit of flair that you wouldn't expect for a rifle that's £40, brand new. Moving up to the action, the B2 is also fitted with a full length dovetail rail if ever you decided to fit a scope to the rifle. Moving further along the rifle we've also got this rather unique barrel release lever um, which is pretty unique to the B2 as far as I'm aware. Moving further along we've also got the standard sights which are, uh, have adjustment for vertical adjustment but unfortunately there is no horizontal adjustment uh, on this rifle at all. Um, hopefully we'll be okay with that but for any longer range shooting I can definitely see us fitting a scope to this. And further along the rifle we've also got a standard hooded sight which is very old school. Another thing that's worth mentioning, it's not exactly a feature so much as many rifles on the market today feature bluing, but the actual quality of the bluing of this particular B2 is actually very very nice, it's almost got an almost mirror finish to it when it catches the light like this, and considering just how much of a budget rifle this truly is, I put it this way, in the UK four tins of respectable pellets is the same price as a B2, um, it's actually really nice and it's all metal and all wood as far as I can see, the only plastic parts is this little bit here and also the actual sight itself is plastic but the outer frame is metal. Overall I think that's actually pretty impressive for such a budget end rifle. So then that's it for features let's move on to handling and then chrono results and see exactly what the B2 is like when it's put to your shoulder. So then handling what's the B2 like when put to the shoulder? It's not too bad to be fair with you, you can definitely feel that there is uh, not so much a lack of solidness, it's hard to explain, there's, you can feel there's not a lot going on in the rifle internally, I'll put it that way, there's definitely, it's a very light gun, which in many ways is a good thing, because it's more going to be juniors and, and teenagers and such that buy the B2, it's very accessible, it'll be something that the parents get the kids for um, Christmas time, and for that it's absolutely perfect, I mean it's, it's incredibly light. And the other thing that I'll say, which I didn't expect, is we've got no rattles in there at all. The only thing you might have heard is my slightly baggy fitting watch. But to be honest with you, it's it, it's okay, to be, to be brutally honest. Um, the lack of a recoil pad, admittedly I'm wearing a, th a slightly thick coat, which may be worth considering, but the lack of a recoil pad doesn't seem to be a major issue at all. It seems to just raise like an older generation air gun. Um, the grooves feel quite nice to, to touch. Um, the only thing I will say is you can tell this isn't as perhaps well engineered as a, a, a hundred pounds air gun or something like that. It's a little bit rough finished in here. You're not going to cut your finger on it, but it's not perfectly finished, I'll put it that way. Um, the other thing I'll say is that, um, and I might get laughed for this because I know earlier in the feature section I said this is not um, horizontally adjustable, adjustable for windage, and it's true, it's not. But the actual sight picture you get when looking down here is better than some of the more expensive guns I've looked down. And the reason for that is, is that the actual sights that you're looking through, and the foresight on the end of the barrel, is really thin. 
And when you look at some of the, the cheaper guns that use things like plastic sights and things like that, and I will name drop the SMK, the XS19, as much as I love it, and the Beeman Pest Controller, not Beeman, Remington Pest Controller um, here, is that where they're made of plastic, they're a little bit chunky. And some people like that, but I like a more fine sight picture when you look down it. And it's such a shame that this model doesn't have the adjustable windage, because it's actually quite a pleasant thing to look down, which I didn't expect. When it comes to loading um, the B2, as mentioned on the features section of the, uh, the video, you've got to push this little button here that will release the barrel, and then cocking the rifle is incredibly easy and straightforward. Like uh, most brake barrels at this point, simply pull the barrel down and she's ready to be loaded. Then after that, return it back up and you're pretty much good to go. It's nice and simple to use. Um, I'm sure, or I'm hoping, that this should keep the barrel nice and solid for years to come. Um, but again, We'll have to see about that. Um, but now let's move on to how she actually shoots and recoil and such. Now here's the thing where it could be, this lightness could be a double-edged sword, or most rifles it could be. The lighter the spring gun that you have, the more recoil you're going to feel. And obviously the way spring guns work, the more recoil you get, the harder it's going to be to be accurate. The B2 on the other hand is this one, I have chronoed it, but we'll chrono it again and I'll show you the results. You can see exactly what they do once they've calmed down, because they do smoke like a dragon when you first take them out of the box. Um, the B2, however, is not a full-powered rifle. Um, this particular B2, last I tested, was doing around six and a half feet pounds. So we'll just see how that translates now, and hopefully you'll be able to see how that feels when it comes to recoil. We'll see how that feels now. And you see, it's not too bad, to be fair with you. It works really well. Um, what I will say is that the trigger itself, it's a metal blade, so you've got to give it that, but it's not an adjustable unit, it's not even a two-stage unit, she is very much a single-stage trigger. Um, it's basically, and it, it's got a bit of weight behind it as well, um, so it's basically you pull it and pull it until it finally decides when it wants to shoot. Um, length of pull, or the distance before the trigger engages and fires, is actually quite short. But, as mentioned, there is a bit of weight there, so you will be pulling a little bit longer than you'd expect compared to, say, other two-stage systems on the market, like that of the XS19 and such like that. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is that the rifle does not come with a safety of any type. So you definitely, you're going to want to bear that in mind when buying this for, say, your Lippmans and such, or just buying this for just general use and plinking. Um, because when that pellet is loaded in, she's, and that barrel is returned, she is dangerous. So definitely bear that in mind. But that's pretty much this handling out of the way. It's actually genuinely not that bad considering the cost of the rifle. It's, it's quite pleasant to shoot. So let's move on to chronographing, and then we'll move on to accuracy. And that is the bit I'm sure that everybody is mostly looking forward to. So let's move on to chronographing and seeing what this particular rifle is doing. Right then, the chronograph is now ready and prepped. We're going to be using the SMK Victory Heavy Shock Pellets to put through here. They are slightly heavier, they're around 20.5 grains, so they're in fact they're, they're knocking on for um, Hay Channel Remington Barracuda weight. But these will usually be these pellets that are given away with these type, this type of rifle. So it's only fair that this is what we put through to give it as fair and accurate review as possible. We'll be putting through 10 shots. As mentioned earlier, this rifle has already been run in, because you'll notice if you pick one up yourself, they do tend to smoke like an absolute dragon when you take them um, out of the bag. And this one in particular was smoking so much, the chronograph was struggling to read what it was putting through. So I thought, say, making a video review even longer than it has to be, I'll put, say, 100 shots through it, let it blow itself out a little bit and see what it does. It's still dieseling ever so slightly, um, but it's still good enough now that we can get a reading and get an idea as to what it can do. So then, let's put 10 shots through and see what the B2 can do. So then, chrono results. What was happening with the B2? Well, something strange actually. As mentioned, this rifle was tested yesterday and it was doing around 6.5 feet pounds on average. Um, overnight, the rifle have decided to apparently make me out to be a liar, and it's jumped up to, well, nudging 10 feet pound through the chronograph. Uh, we've got a maximum spread of 47 feet per second, and we've also got a standard deviation of 16.64 feet per second per shot. The thing is, we did have two shots. Again, this rifle is not fully run in yet, and a lot of people that own B2s will back me up here, and 
tell you that they do come with a lot of packing grease, both inside and outside of the rifle. You can actually, if I pan it up here, you can see we've got a bit of oil seeping out just by the action here. They are absolutely fully greased up. But if we take away the two shots that were slightly low, or more realistically where the rifle will end up when it's actually burnt itself out, um, the actual maximum spread is only 21 feet per second, which isn't too bad. Again, for a rifle that costs the same as four tins of respectable pellets. Um, so yeah, no, it's an interesting gun to shoot, especially to put through the chrono. You never quite know what result you're going to get with all that grease in there, but that actually wasn't too bad. I'm quite impressed with that. So then, let's move on to accuracy. So then, accuracy testing. For this one, we won't be going quite so far out as what we usually do. Usually it's 25 and 40 yards. This time we'll do a few quick shots at 10 yards with open sights, and then 25 yards once we put a scope on top. At the end of the day, the B2 never promised to be a long-range target shooter, and if we pushed it out there, I guarantee you the rifle would have no intention of living up to that promise. After all, it's called a B2, not Teresa, so we'll keep it fairly short and see what a budget rifle can do. So we'll set the target up to 10 yards, and we'll see what the rifle is capable of. So, 10 yard accuracy test, how did we do? Well, first things first, I do apologise if you can hear a lot of rain noise and such in the background, and even the odd occasional rumble of thunder. It is absolutely pouring it down here at the moment. As you can see by our now rather disgustingly soaked target card. But if you look carefully, you can see we've got one shot went just above the ball, and we've got one shot just to the right of that. However, perfectly on cue. Can you hear this ring? <laughs> Only in England, eh? I bet the fellas at Demolition Ranch don't have to put up with this crap. Anyways, we've got the main three shots cluster just here, just going high above the ball. That's actually pretty good. Uh, hang on, we have come prepared today as well. I've brought the uh, very high-tech group measuring system. That was a five pence piece right there. As you can see, that is very easily covered up by that 5p coin. We do have two shots low, as you can see here. It was a five shot group, but at the same time, I really don't think you can play. I know it's only 10 yards, but it's lucky it's on point actually. As I mentioned, we don't have any horizontal um, adjustment on that scope, so that's that setup, sorry, so that's lucky, them sides. But yeah, we've got most of our group well under a five pence piece at 10 yards. So now what we're going to do, we're going to push the target out a little bit further out to 16 yards, and we're going to do the same thing with no scope on the rifle. And then we'll push it out even further to 25 yards, but we will chuck a scope on there just to, um, well, basically to make up for my poor skills using simple uh, iron sights that come on the gun. But we'll then go to, as mentioned, 25 yards and see what the rifle can do then. But 10 yards, you've got to be honest, other than the two that went low, which could have been my fault, that's actually pretty damn good. Anyways, let's move on to 16 and see if our lucky streak will hold out. So then, 16 yards. The B2, we've put out five shots once again. As you can see, we do have two flyers here and here that have gone all over the place. It could be the gun, it could be the pellets, it could be me. As I mention all the time, I do see do my shooting from a seated but unrested position. Um, but, once again, if I get the magical five pence piece, put it just there, you can see the main cluster is sitting just left of the bull and happily sits under a five pence piece. When we consider that this rifle has, I know I've said it multiple times now, but costs £45, £50 depending on where you go, I think that's actually a genuinely impressive group. And I don't think anybody, teenager or even adult, would be upset with a result like that considering the cost of the rifle. Now then, let's push it on to 25 yards, which is usual hunting distance, and let's see what it does then. The only difference is, is I will be putting a scope on, uh, on top of this rifle. It will be a Nico Sterling 3 to 9 by 40 scope. Um, just one we've kept in storage for rifles like these. And the reason why I use that and not the Milbro Clearview is because the Milbro Clearview that we usually use is a little bit of a monster. It's a 4 to 16 by 40 and it, to be fair with you, would look just a little bit stupid sitting on top of here, if I'm being honest. So we'll go for a more normal size scope, 3 to 9 by 40 good scope. We'll chuck that on there, push her out to 25 yards, and see what she can do. 
So then it's time for our final group of the day. 25 yards with the unrested with the B2. I'll be sitting as usual just over there where that chair is. And here is the patented and trademarked high-tech Big Dan's Air Guns target. Um, as stated, we put the Nico Sterling Mount Master Scope on top there with a one-piece mount. So let's see what the B2 can do. 25 yards, unrested. Well then, accuracy results. How did our little B2 do? Well, the first two groups, if you remember, was done with the standard iron sights, no scope attached. The main cluster here, as you just saw there, fits perfectly at 10 yards under a 5 pence piece. We did get two flyers, one here and one here. That, what you can see there, is not actually a pellet impact point. If you take a look, if I zoom in just a little bit, you can see it's actually how the paper's torn as the pellet's gone through. We then pushed it out to 16 yards, again with no scope attached, this is with iron sights, and you can see once again, the group fits, the main group anyways, fits under the uh, 5 pence piece. Once again though, we do still have two flyers, uh, one high, one low. This could be again because the rifle has only half burnt itself out with the grease on board. As said the day before, she was doing around 6.5 feet pound, now it's up to 9 foot pounds, there's definitely some grease moving around in there. Um, and then we moved on to the 25 yard group with the Nico Sterling Mount Master scope mounted on there as well. And if you take a look, we have three flyers this time, or three off target shots down here, but the main cluster is up top. And if we put the 20 pence piece down here now, it won't quite fit under a 5 pence, but 20p piece, that's pretty good to be fair with you. Um, again, in comparison, here's a got the 10p here, so you can see just how much smaller the 20p is, and it fits under the 20 pence piece. Again, the groups could tighten up even more once it's run in and the barrel's leaded in a lot more. This B2 is pretty much brand new. Um, so again, she's got a little way to go before she's fully run in, but other than that, I'm actually pretty impressed. Again, put into consideration just how little these rifles cost, and there's really not a great deal to complain about, to be honest with you. So then, let's move on to the final verdict. For target shooting, as mentioned, I think that the B2, especially for youngsters that are new to the sport or parents wanting to get them a Christmas present to see if they get into shooting, the B2, in my opinion, is pretty much perfect for them, especially if you've got a very tight budget and you just fancy a newer gun. Even secondhand, you won't really get much for £40. You might get a BSA Meteor if you're lucky, um, but again, that is entirely dependent on the condition of the gun. At least with these, you will get a one-year warranty with them as well. Um, I wouldn't recommend them for pest control anywhere above, say, 10 yards um, for the reasons of they will, once they're burnt out, the ones that I get in, they're usually around six and a half, seven feet pound of power. You don't really want to be going out to, say, 30 yards and beyond with that. And as well as that, we did get the occasional flyer today. You can see there's, there's two out of the five shot groups and there's three on the last group there. I put a few more pellets through it just to see what it could really do. Um, so again, I wouldn't push it any further than that. For use inside barns and things, if you want just a rifle that uh, you're not frightened about knocking around and you want to, say, take care of a few rats or something like that, to be fair with you, the B2 would be pretty perfect for it. Um, so again, there's no complaints there. When it comes to actual negatives for the B2, it's really hard to do, if I'm honest. I know a lot of guys, like I've already mentioned, like to go really harsh on the little B2, but the, in my opinion, they do see it. They attack it from the wrong perspective. They compare it to guns that are, say, 100, 200 pounds, which blatantly isn't fair. Um, negatives, I'd say she's very greasy when you first get it out and oily. You, it will smoke, as I've already mentioned, like a dragon. Um, but to be honest, other than that, oh, the trigger pull. Um, is quite heavy. It's a short travel on the trigger, but it is quite heavy and it's non-adjustable. Another negative is the fact that there is no safety on the rifle whatsoever. So, if you do this by do buy this for a youngster, make sure obviously be with them at all times, but definitely make sure um, that they know their way around an air rifle. They always treat it like it's loaded because with a rifle like this with no safety, that is incredibly important. Um, but other than that, there's no 
major complaints, if I'm honest with you. It puts out respectable performance, especially considering the price that it's at. It doesn't seem to be particularly pellet fussy. Uh, these are just with the SMK Heavy Shock pellets, um, which again, I test these with it because, for one, they group reasonably well through the rifle. Um, and two, there are cheaper tinner pellets that you'll probably end up buying or they'll throw in with the, uh, the rifle anyway. Um, but overall, yeah, I'm actually quite impressed with the B2. I, in my opinion, I know it's each to their own, but I do think that it's uh, a little bit unfairly treated, perhaps, in the current uh, the air gun community, shall we say. So then, thanks for watching this episode of Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews. Oh, we've also got a bit of news as well. I know it has been a while since we put out uh, our latest video with this one. We've had a bit of a hiatus. I do apologise about that. We have been quite busy. Um, but we've also uh, had a bit of a breakthrough. Um, to those that have recommended we review the Zabroya Kozak, um, we've actually gone one better. I apologise it's taken so long, but we, uh, we currently now are able to stock Zabroya rifles. So if you've got any, want any more information on them and such, head on over to bigdansairguns.co.uk and uh, see what you think of them. But we'll be getting a Kozak in for you as soon as possible now we can actually have access to them. Um, so yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. And like I said, I haven't forgotten you. I, it'll, hopefully it might be the next one, or we may have an Artemis M30 we may review next. But it is definitely coming. And if there's any requests for it, we can do a Hortizia as well. So thanks for watching guys, if you want any more information about any air guns at all or uh, just want to have a chat in general, get in touch with us at bigdansairguns.co.uk and we'll see you next time.